The artificial intelligence race is reaching a new level this morning. Co-counsel is the first artificial intelligence legal assistant, and it's making its debut right here on Morning Joe. According to its developers, Co-counsel can perform several tasks, such as legal research, document review, and contract analysis more quickly and accurately than ever before possible. And joining us now, the co-founders of Case Text, Chief Innovation Officer Pablo Aradano and CEO Jake Heller. Also with us for this conversation, immigration lawyer Greg Siskind. Um, but first, Pablo and Jake, uh, walk us through exactly what co-counsel does and why is this considered revolutionary? Well, thanks for the question. Uh, like you said, co-counsel is the first ever AI legal assistant. And the way that it works is it can read, write, and understand at a very high level. So you can give it a task like you know, doing research for you or reading through thousands of pages of documents and ask it uh, quite difficult questions and come back to answer with you uh, very quickly. So Pablo and Jake, as an example, you have a live demo prepared for us on the January 6th report, allowing us to ask co-counsel a few questions. So let's start by asking our first question. Uh, can Donald Trump be charged for conspiracy to make a false statement? Sure. Uh, so what I've done right now is I've uploaded all 847 pages of the January 6th committee report, and I will pull up that question, and I've actually asked a few others just for fun. Like, for example, is there any evidence in the report to exonerate Donald Trump? Okay. And what are the most incriminating tweets, uh, according to the report, that, that Donald Trump has said? Do you guys have any other questions you may want to add? We needed a bigger server for the tweets. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, punch that in, though. All right. Trump question. So I'm going to ask it to get started, and it's going to take uh, just a couple minutes to read through these 847 pages and start delivering answers. So, so in the interim, let me ask you one question. How would this application uh, handle an average potential legal client of yours coming in? I mean, do you sit there with the computer and he says, you know, do you think I can beat this case? And do you do, you do you know, type that question in? That's a great question. I, I think the way that a lawyer might use this is, you know, privately doing their research, trying to determine, you know, what's the law, what, you know, on that particular issue, what are the exceptions, right? And take a bit of time to really analyze the facts and, and law of the case. And well, this would help assist you get there. Thankfully, we have a lawyer sitting right here. So, so Greg, how mm -hmm. would you use this to help with what you're doing? Well, I actually use it um, in consultations. I don't necessarily have to wait until afterwards mm -hmm. in a live consultation with somebody. If there's a question that comes up, the old way, I would usually just track somebody down in the office that was a specialist on the particular issue and just ask them. But a lot of times you can't find that person or they don't have the answer. Um, and I've used it a number of times in consultations to get a quick answer um, with information that I can rely on because it's not just combing the web. It's, it's going into legal libraries that I already know where the sources are. And Ukrainian refugees is something you're working on. How would this be useful there? Yeah, so that's actually how Pablo and I connected. Um, he wanted to, I've told, this is a big national pro bono class action case for um, the 100,000 plus Ukrainians uh, that have come into the country about whether they are entitled to automatic work authorization. And that case is one that uh, we filed in federal court in Illinois, and we were filing a second case related to it in D.C. Um, there's a lot of complex legal issues involved in that case, and we needed to figure out, for example, uh, on fee refunds for overcharging Ukrainian refugees, um, what the law was, whether the government had sovereign immunity and could get defended for that, and the tool proved really helpful. How, how would this help the dreamers, this, this uh, application? Well, I mean, there's a lot of complex legal issues that lawyers deal with when somebody in our office is coming in asking us, for example, um, you know, are they eligible to get permanent residency? It may depend on their immigration history. It may depend on what circuit you're living in, and the courts are different on that. Um, so the, all the case law in the country, the federal case law, is in the system, and you can find that. Um, I also have and one of the cool things and I, about this, you just saw how the uh, you can upload something. I write a, um, a co-write a book uh, from the American Immigration Law Association, a 3,300-page manual on immigration law, and I can actually just ask 
my manual questions uh, on it, and there's a DACA chapter that's 200 pages, and if I have a DACA question come up, I just ask essentially myself. So we've given it more than enough time. Uh, Pablo and Jake, what do we have there? Do we have answers, and what are they? We do. Um, so we asked three questions. What evidence is there to uh, incriminate Trump for inciting an insurrection, uh, to exonerate him, and what are his tweets? And what you can see in the interface uh, is the very, you know, one chapter read against it, and it begins, this document contains ample evidence that can be used <laughs> to uh, uh, to charge Trump with inciting erection. This evidence includes Trump's repeated attempts to pressure Mike Pence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one thing that I think is funny and interesting is you see the, the column about exonerating Trump is mostly blank. Uh, but, you know, it, it, like a good lawyer, it's trying to make the best case it can. And so uh, it does include a section from Chapter 7 of the report. You know, while there is no direct evidence in the document to exonerate Donald Trump, there are a few details that could be used to argue his defense. He told rioters to go home, asked for people to remain peaceful, and that some individuals claim violence was not directly caused by his rhetoric. Right. So it tries to give a, uh, uh, you know, tries to find evidence. Can you forward money. it to Merrick Garland? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he has all this material and more. Uh, he's doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Paul Arredondo, Jake Heller, and Greg Siskin. Thank you all very much.